Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's Journey Through Torah. We're continuing the journey in the wilderness today. Now, this week's a little different because it's not just about the wilderness. And, you know, we, we know it's about the process. It's about the journey. It's about getting to the land. It's about walking with Yahweh in the midst of it all. But here we get a sneak peek. Ah, here we go. We get a sneak peek at the promise. We get to look to the land and see what Yahweh has told us about it and experience this for ourselves. And that's where the problem lies. <laughs> see, we, we, we can trust Yahweh, we can take his word, and we can follow him. But when we get the opportunity to go check it out for ourselves, so to speak, how do we approach it? Are we going to be affected by what we see, or are we going to listen to Yahweh no matter what it looks like. See, we can apply this in our lives today. Are we going to listen to him and, and understand that his promises are still true? His promises are still his promises. The things that he desires for us, he says, if you do these things, there, I, I, I'm with you and there will be blessing in your life. Do we trust him in that? Even when it doesn't look like it. Even if we don't understand the situation or the, or the how or the why. Do we need to understand what lies in front of us to be obedient to Yahweh? And that is where the heart lies. We need to, to listen to him and follow him and trust him. See, trust is synonymous with faith. If we have faith in Yahweh, we will trust him. And this is where we see things in scripture, like we walk by faith, not by sight. We, we trust not by what we see, but by whom we know. We know Yahweh is true. We know his word is true. We know that he said if we walk with him, he'll be with us. So what happens when we take our eyes off him and put our eyes on our circumstances and put our eyes on what's before us? We have the choice to make. We can see things as he sees them, or we can see things through just whatever we're looking at without him. And, and that is the choice we need to make. We need to have faith. We need to do these things. See, we can say, yes, I walk by faith, not by sight. But let's be honest. We allow the things around us to influence us. And you can, you can say, no, the things in, in, in life and daily, it's not an influence on me, but everything around you, whether positive or negative or indifferent, everything around you will have an influence on you in some way, shape, or form. So this is why it's so important that we need to stay in the word, that we need to keep our eyes set to Yahweh, that we need to, to understand what we can and in the areas where we don't, just trust him. We need to be in the word, we need to be praying, and we need to learn to follow. See, because it's not just about what we, what we see, it's about how we see what we see. You ever walk into a situation and think something is, is going on that's not? Uh, I, I, I can't really cite them or recall them specifically, but I remember seeing commercials based on that. You know, it's, uh, it's what you walk into. It's not really what you think. It's not really what you see. I've seen some videos, uh, short clips, where perception is changing throughout it, and you don't catch it. And then at the end of the video, they'll show you where they've made changes throughout the entire video that you just didn't catch. So, I mean, yeah, these are the things that we're, that we want to take a look at. It's, it's not just what you see. It's how you perceive what you see. And that is where influence comes in. We can be biased. Um, we can be influenced by how we've already perceived things in life or, or, certain situations or circumstances we've already been through, we can apply to future situations. But what if Yahweh says something different about these things? Do we trust him or do we allow our prior influences and experiences to dictate what the future is going to be like? We need to trust him. If, if old things have passed away and all things become new, then we need to trust him in him saying, if you follow me, it will be different. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple things here. First off, we know that what we see influences us. Perception is the key to how we view what is in front of us. So how do we perceive what we see? Again, oftentimes we see something like a picture or a moment in time and, and our minds fill in the blanks of what is happening in the moment. And they've even done things like this uh, with, with children in school. You know, show them a picture and say, write me a story about the picture. You know, creative writing kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But 
we do that <laughs> in areas where we, we, we shouldn't because we, we kind of say, this is what's going on and this is what's happening, and that may not be the case. Okay, That's why Scripture tells us to let, it, let everything be established by witnesses. That's why you can't just have one person's idea or perception of something uh, dictate policy, so to speak. It ha you, there, are, there are witnesses set to make sure of a situation and to hear all sides of the story. It's not just one side of the story. Scripture says that as well. The first person to present his case seems right until he's cross-examined, you know, until there's other witnesses that come in, until you hear the rest of the story, okay? So, uh, again, just be careful with your discernment and be careful with uh, how, how you view these things that are actually going on. Psalm 119, 36 and 37 says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Again, what we allow ourselves to meditate on, to think on, to focus on, what we continually feed ourselves with, you know, spiritually, right? What we continue to put within us, that will shape who we are and how we think about things and how we perceive the world. Let it be the word of Yahweh that does that. Let it be his mind, his word, his life that shapes our perception of how we are to view the world. Because if we look at it that way, we will see it redemptively, restoratively. We will see the heart of Yahweh to, to a people that have turned their backs on him, but he's calling them to come to return to him, to come back to him, and there is a better way. Uh, Romans 8, 5 through 8 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Ruach set their minds on the things of the Ruach. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Ruach is life and shalom. For the mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not submit itself to the law of God, for it cannot. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if we are constantly uh, not paying any attention to what Yahweh thinks, don't care about what he thinks, and just want to do our own thing, of course we're not going to be pleasing to him. Of course we're not going to be walking in a way that is that he desires for us to. But if we are walking with him according to his word and his ways and, and have our heart toward him, that is the spiritual things. And notice that it said in Romans that to be spiritual is also to submit yourself to the law of God, to submit yourself to his word to show us his heart. Okay, let's keep going. Proverbs 3, 23, 7 says, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. To finish that verse, it says, eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The point of this is being a person, who he is, is not based on the outward appearance, who he projects himself to be. It's not based on that, but what he thinks and plans and meditates within himself. So as a man thinks, so is he, not just by what it looks like. That's the point of that. Okay. A uh, good, good point of that is social media. You know, we see social media, media today and someone can, can create a facade and put it out there as themselves. This is who I am, but it's really not. And that's why, again, we need to be careful. We need discernment and, um, and, and the things that we are allowing to influence us, right? So again, perception and interpretation of that perception. These are the things we need to pay attention to. So to observe something and to properly discern and interpret what is happening. For this, we need to follow the word of Yahweh and allow his Ruach to help us. Okay, so this is what was going on when they were to go into the land and to see the land and bring back a report. This is what was going on. They were to go and, and view the land through what they had been told by Yahweh. View the land according to the promise. This, are they going to stand in faith for what is in front of them? Or are they going to be steered away by their own bias in, in relationship to these things. This is what we're looking at. So there's something we need to pay attention to in this. This Parsha starts off and it ends with what we see and how we are to interpret what we see. What I mean by that is it talks about the land. When you go into the land, bring the, bring the report back. But we've been told up to this point about the land. And uh, it's kind of like they went into the land, but they already had the answers before they went. Okay, but they, but they felt they needed to go. We'll cover that in a second. And so Yahweh allowed them to go, and they went. And what did they do when they were there? Did they walk in faith, or did they not walk in faith, but walked according to the things of this world and what they saw? Only by that. 
And then when we end with Zitziot, which again is something that Yahweh said, I want you to make so that you see as a reminder. And you would see this on a daily basis. So again, it's something that you daily see and remember something. And we'll get to what that something is here in, in just a few minutes. Okay. So first off, we start with the question, whose idea was it to send spies into the land? And I don't really like the word spies. Um, they weren't really sent as spies. And the word used here is not spies. Quite literally, the word in the Hebrew that's used there is tour, which uh, means exactly what you would think. And, and it means to tour to go around, to collect information, to go see things, right? So go tour. So not really spies, they were more tourists. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> but who sent them? Whose idea was it to send them? We read in Bamidbar where it says, send men on your behalf, shalech lecha. So again, Adonai said to Moshe. So we see it, it's Yahweh telling Moshe to send people to the land, but we see a different story. Again, two witnesses, right? When we get to Devarim, Deuteronomy, and, and he talks about this incident, what it says here is Deuteronomy 1, 21. Look, Adonai, your God has placed the land before you. Go up and take possession as Adonai, the God of your ancestors, has told you. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Verse 22, you approached me. Every one of you and said, let's send men ahead of us to explore the country for us and bring back word concerning what route we should use in going up and what the cities we will encounter are like. The idea seemed good to me. So I took 12 of your men, one from each tribe. So see, when we get the full story, it's kind of like the people approached Moshe and said, uh, we don't really know what we're getting into. I mean, we know what Yahweh has told us, but we don't really know for ourselves what we're getting into. So we should send people in there to check it out. And it seems that Moshe went to Yahweh and says, what do you think? And Yahweh says, okay, fine, send men for yourself. That's, that's Shalach Lecha, send men for yourself. He didn't say, uh, I therefore tell you to send men, I command you. And, and no, there was kind of like this back and forth in there. Okay, so it's, it's like the people approach Moshe, Moshe went to Yahweh, Yahweh says, okay, fine. You know, if you're not going to listen to me, do it for yourself. Go ahead, just do it get it over with kind of a thing, right? So what happens? So they went <clears throat> and they returned, but they changed the, the order of their report. Scripture says they brought a slanderous report, an evil report, a slanderous report against the land. They literally slandered the promise. I mean, consider things like this. When they were in the land, they didn't get manna in the land. They got manna in the wilderness. When they were in the land, they ate from the land you know, taste and see that the Lord is good kind of a thing. They tasted the fruit of the promise. They tasted what the land had to offer, and they turned their back on it. But two men did not. Caleb and Yehoshua. And, and again, not going into that here, but Yehoshua, his name was changed to Yehoshua, Joshua. His name was Hoshia. And so his name was changed right before this mission. Again, there's something to that if you want to study that out and find others where their names were changed and uh, who changed them and why and what happened immediately after. I mean, there's some interesting things in that, but not going there today. So today they went and they went to the land and, and the 10 men versus the two. They're supposed to go as 12, but they went and they came back 10 against two. And uh, they all had the same experiences. They all ate of the same things. They all saw the same things. They all slept, you know, in the same places, and, but they had two completely different reports, you know? So it's like, so was one of them lying? Are, are, are they reporting something that's, that's not true? You know, and you can even make that argument. They only reported what was factual, but it's not fully answering what they were supposed to do. You know, it's, they're not just reporting facts, they're reporting facts based on their bias. They're reporting facts based on what they saw, not based on what Yahweh had told them. They believed the land and the people that were in the land more so, and their faithlessness than standing in faith to what Yahweh had said to do. So again, they went and they changed the order of their mission. Moshe asked them to report on the people and then the fruit. They reported on the fruit and then the people. When it was told out of order, the emphasis ceases to be the good of the land and becomes the difficulty of the conquest. It's not a matter of, so, so what are the people like and the cities like and, and what's the fruit like? So the, so the closing argument would have been, 
look, the land is good. It's everything that Yahweh said. Yeah, there's hardships, but look at the good of the land. And when told the other way around, yeah, the fruit, I mean, yeah, it's good fruit, but oh my goodness, these people, I don't, we, we can't, we can't conquer them. We can't overcome what the, the obstacles in front of us. See, the emphasis changes when told that way. So let's look at a couple things. What does it say about the land? And the land is good. The land is, is beautiful. If you've never been there, someday you will be. But uh, if you've never been there, um, please find a way to go. It, it is an amazing experience. Okay. So a couple of things. First off, uh, Numbers 13, 31, it says, The men who had gone up with them said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. In Hebrew, it says, The people said, We cannot attack these people because they are stronger than he. Aha. Uh -huh. Because it says, Ki hazak hu memenu. Ki hazak hu. It says, Because they are stronger than him. Because they are stronger than he. Stronger than who? It's not just they're stronger than us, they're stronger than him. So it, it's, this implies, because it can read this way, it implies that we cannot go up because they're stronger than Yahweh. I mean, Yahweh says he's going to be with us, but there's too many of them. Again, kind of like the, the fruit and then the, and then the people. You know, yeah, God is good. Yes, he is awesome. And yes, he's led us to this place. And yes, the signs and wonders and miracles in Egypt. But that's been a while. <laughs> See, I mean, it, it changes things, doesn't it? So again, what was, what was the emphasis of the report? Now, how did the spies see themselves? Again, this kind of allows some insight in, into why they were reporting this way. Because how they viewed themselves was what was going through their mind when they were looking at the opposition that was in front of them. Numbers 13.33 so there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim, and we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seem to them. So, again, trying to make associations with uh, people who they had, had had encountered stories about before and everything, right? So these these mighty people are there, and and we can't compare to them. You know, we seem like grasshoppers to them. So we thought, and we must have appeared the same to them. Again, it's about how we see ourselves, and then we project how we see ourselves. Well, if I think about this about myself, then they must look at me the same way. No, we need to see things as Yahweh sees them, because that changes everything. It is a good land. Look, in Numbers 14, uh, verse 7, they said to the whole assembly of Bnei Israel, the land through which we passed is an exceptionally good land. If Adonai is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land and will give it to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy 26, 9 says, he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Remember, Caleb and Joshua, their report was completely different than uh, that of the, of the other ones. Okay, So Yahweh watches over the land. We see in Deuteronomy 11, it says, therefore, you are to keep the whole mitzvah that I am commanding you today, so that you may be strong to go in and uh, go on, go in and possess the land that you are crossing over to possess, so that you may prolong your days on the land that Adonai swore to give to your fathers and to their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are going in to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you came there. You planted your seed and watered by foot like a vegetable garden. But the land you are crossing over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, drinking from the rain of the heavens it drinks its in the water. It is a land that Adonai your God cares for. That's the emphasis here. It is a land that Adonai your God cares for. And the eyes of Adonai your God are always on it, from the beginning of the year even up to the end of the year. There are some supernatural things to pay attention to in the land. Yahweh, again, he says things like, if you listen to me, if you keep my word, if you're my people, I'll give you the, the, the water that you need at the right time, the right rains at the right time, the, the, you have what you need when you need it kind of a thing. Yahweh assures them. Even when they came back and brought the, brought the slanderous report and they said, you know, no, we can't do it, we can't do it. Caleb and Joshua are the ones who stood up and said, yes, we can, because Yahweh said we can. He said he's with us, and this is what he wants us to do. So this is what this is where they were doing. And then the people lost heart. Ten men disheartened an entire nation of people. And they all said, well, that's it. We can't do it. You ever notice uh, people tend to focus on what they want to focus on? They, they, they're 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 what they want to focus on is what they are, are going to get stuck on. It's going to be important to them. It's going to be there. And here they couldn't get over the idea that, 
no, we just can't do it. We just can't do it. And so they got to the point to where the people said, that's it. We're just going to die off in the wilderness. And then Yahweh says, okay, fine. Have it your way. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he says. He says, uh, okay, look, fine. You're going to die in the wilderness. Okay. You're going to die in the wilderness. The next generation is going to go into the land. The next generation are going to be the ones to inherit the land and to go in and to have it. Hmm. That's the, way, that's the way it was. Now, here's the thing. Right after Yahweh says, you're not going to go into the land, but your children are, save Caleb and Joshua, right? Then he starts talking about offerings in the land. Again, it's a matter of reassuring, yes, you will go into the land as a people, but you guys specifically, you're not going to believe me. You're not going to walk with me. If you're not going to do that, you're not going to be able to maintain the promise in the land. Again, obedience and faith go together. <laughs> so again, Yahweh assures that they will go into the land. And when they do, these offerings will be brought. And again, this is another assurance that they will go in. We see in Numbers 15, it says, Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land of your habitations, which I give to you, and I will make an offering by fire into the, or and you will make an offering by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering, a sacrifice, performing a vow, a free will offering, Solemn feast, make a sweet savor to the Lord of, of the herd of the flock. So again, the emphasis here, what he's saying is that you will go into the land. So after he addresses their rebellion, he addresses obedience and drawing near to him. And then if anyone wants to draw near, this is what they was, this is how they were to do it. Now notice anyone, not just uh, Israel, but those of the nations who want to come in to serve Yahweh as well. They would be a part of the people as well. Okay. Uh, again, Numbers 15, 14, if a foreigner stays with you or whoever may be through all your generations, and he wants to bring an offering made by fire as a fragrant aroma for Adonai, he is to do the same as you. He's not to do it different. He is to do the same as you. For this community, there will be the same law for you as for the foreigner living with you. This is a permanent regulation throughout all your generations. The foreigner is to be treated the same way before Adonai as yourself. Verse 16, the same Torah and standard of judgment will apply to both you and the foreigner living with you. So again, if there are those in the nations who are coming in who want to serve the one true God, the God of Israel, they are to do it the same way Israel does it. Okay, so again, Yahweh addresses their, their disobedience and their rebellion and the hearts turning away, but he says, I, you will go into the promise, you will do these things, and you will be obedient to me, and you will worship, I will receive you. And, and again, we're given all these things of it being done his way. Then we're given the command of tzitzit so that it's a remi to remind us that we walk in his ways. You ever wonder why the command for, for Sitsi was, was here? You know, why is it given right after the command of, of the land and then after offerings? You know, or to, I mean, why is, it seems kind of an odd place to put it in there, but, but it does make sense because a, a, a rebellion is addressed. Don't go after your own ways. Then worship me my way with my people and keep my word every day. So let's take a quick look at it. Numbers 15. 38, say to the people of Israel, make tassels on the corners, on the kanaf or wings of your garments, and put a blue cord on each tassel, and you are to do this for all time to come. The tassels will serve as reminders, and each time you see them, you will remember all my commands and obey them. Then you will not turn away from me and follow your own wishes and desires. Look at this. They serve as reminders, and when you look at them, it is to remind you to keep the word of Yahweh, that you do what he says. Okay? Let's take a look at this for a minute. And, the, and it says in the King James, it says, seek not after your own heart, your own eyes, and after which you go whoring. That's, a, that's actually a good way to put it because that's a more literal, literal reading of how it's to be read. So look, don't, don't go after your own heart. Like Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Don't go after your own eyes, 1 John 2, 16. And uh, don't go, don't that you use your own eyes to go whoring after again, uh, 1 John 2 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And then verse 40, uh, Numbers 15, the tassels will remind you to keep all my commands, and you will belong completely to me. See that? The Sitio is to be a reminder, and Yahweh says, when you look at them, this is how, what I want you to remember. When you look at them, you are to remember 
that you keep my word that you don't go running off after the shiny things that you that you, that draw your eye and that you are to keep my commands in everything that you do and that you will be wholehearted and you will belong completely to me now let's tie this together let's book bookcase this you know bookends from the beginning of this parsha to the end of this parsha remember back at the, at the beginning where it says that they spy out the land in the hebrew shalach lecha and ashim send for yourself men and hear this word vayaturo at Eretz Canaan. So, Vayaturo, the word tour that's used there, tour, and, and that's what we're looking at, to tour the land of Canaan. That's what we're looking at, right? Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm giving you the people of Israel. So, this is what they were to do. They were to go tour and, and look at the land, wander around the land and look at everything in the land and come back and, and to give the report, right? And then here we're given an instruction that the heart wanders, don't follow it. Ah, it kind of gives us a clue in what the, in what the uh, spies did, right? It says your heart wanders, don't follow it. But yet go to the land, go to the promise, and wander in that, find that, right? Yeah, it's the same words used there, guys. Let's, let's read it. Numbers 15, 39. There shall be a tassel for you to look at, and remember all the commandments of Yahweh to do them. Look at this. Not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes, which you are inclined to whore after. So it says, not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes. Again, in the Hebrew, it reads, Valo taturo achare levavchem veachare anechem. So this word that's used there is velo and not taturo. Again, is the word tur, the same word, that we have back at the beginning when it says to spy out the land, to go tour and wander around the land. He says, so don't go following after your heart when it's wandering all over the place for these things. Be wholehearted. Serve Yahweh wholeheartedly. Be wholehearted to Yahweh. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Again, we serve him with all our heart. And then he says that he will do something with all his heart. What is it? Just as a side note, there is only one place in the scripture that Yahweh says he will do something with all his heart. Only one place, just one place. What is it? And where is that scripture, right? Let's look at it, Jeremiah 32, 37, 41. I will certainly bring my people back again from all the countries where I will scatter them in my fury. I will bring them back to this very city and let them live in peace and safety. And then they will be my people and I will be their God, and I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and the good of their descendants, verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me, and they will never leave me. I will find joy in doing good for them, and I will faithfully and wholeheartedly plant them, replant them in this land. See that? It's the only time that Yahweh says he's going to do something wholeheartedly with all his heart. And that is to bring the people from the nations and replant them back in the land. Back to the promise, back to the beginning, one king, one kingdom, one people. That's what we're looking at, guys. So again, we're looking at restoration where we've, we've given our own ways and turned away from him. And he again has called us back to him to walk with him in his ways and to see things as he sees them. It's good stuff for us, right? To see things as he sees them. We need to learn how he sees them. And that's where life in the word comes in. All right. So let's get into that, guys. Keep staying in the word. And, and uh, I, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. And I, I pray that you're a blessing to others, right? So as we receive the word, we give of the word. As we receive life from Yahweh, we give life to one another. So let's do that, okay? And if this has been a blessing to you, then I pray that, uh, share it. I pray that you share it. And in whatever format or venue or whatever you watch these, please help get the word out there and help share these videos. And if they have been a blessing to you, please also consider making a donation to help us continue the work to help us continue in these things to help uh, keep getting these things out there okay so uh, with that uh, bless you all thanks for tuning in thanks for watching through uh, the the entirety of this parsha and until next time blessings and shalom